This Adobe Captivate training video will demonstrate the Nebraska Astronomy Applet Project's Eclipsing Binary Simulator. It is part of a series of videos designed to jumpstart faculty usage of simulations in the introductory astronomy classroom. This video strongly emphasizes using the simulation interactively by having a dialogue with students in the classroom. The Eclipsing Binary Simulator allows one to vary the stellar properties of both stars and their orbital parameters and see the resulting changes in the light curve. One can change Earth's observational perspective as well as view the binary system from any orientation independently. Presets include useful contrived systems as well as real data. And although there are a large number of controls in this simulation, their operation is rather intuitive and straightforward. Let me talk through some questions and their expected answers that could be used in an interactive dialogue with students in the classroom. I will start with example one, which shows two stars of equal mass, equal radius, and equal surface temperatures in circular orbits. I will then change the inclination to zero degrees so we are looking down on the plane and start the animation. Some of the questions we might ask include, what does this green X represent? Okay, the center of mass. The simulator says that the period is 1.2 days. Do both stars have the same orbital period? Okay, do they have the same speed? Okay, what are the stars actually orbiting, bringing students back to the concept of the center of mass? Note that both stars are moving counterclockwise. Is there a system where both move clockwise? And we can unlock the perspective from the Earth manipulate the system so we're actually seeing it from the opposite direction and visualize that. Can one star move clockwise and one counterclockwise? No, because then they wouldn't both be on opposite sides of the center of mass. Both stars are moving on the same orbit. Is that true for all binary systems? No. Well, why is it true for this system? Okay, because they have the same mass. So if they had different masses, would they have different sized orbits? Well, let's check that prediction. I'm going to go over here to the star properties, and I'm going to change the mass of star 1 to two solar masses. What do you predict will happen to the system if I do that? And most students will predict that the more massive star will be closer to the center of mass and the less massive star farther away. Do the stars still have the same orbital period? Okay, its value has changed, but it's the same for both stars. Do they have the same speeds? Okay, which star is moving faster? All right, the star in the larger orbit. So let me go back to equal masses here. And note the orbits are circular again. What will happen to the speeds of the stars if I make the orbit elliptical? Has the orbital speed changed? OK, it's not the same value all the times. Some of the times it's faster. When is it faster? All right, when the two stars are close to the center of mass. Where have we seen this type of behavior before? In Kepler's second law. Let me return to circular orbits and bring in some of the concepts of the light curve. This panel shows the variation in light that is coming from the binary system. Why are there no eclipses present? Okay, because neither star is cutting in front of the other from our perspective. What would we need to change in the simulator to have eclipses in the light curve panel? Right, we'd have to look at the system edge on what we call an inclination of 90 degrees. Note that the depth of the eclipse, the amount of light that's missing, the eclipse depth, is 50%, meaning that in both eclipses, half of the total amount of light coming from the system is eclipsed. Both of these stars are the same surface temperature. 
What would happen if we increase the surface temperature of star 1? Okay, let's check that prediction. Our eclipses are no longer the same depth. What is happening when this deeper eclipse is occurring? Yes, the blue star is behind the orange star. So why is this eclipse deeper? Because more energy is coming from each square meter of the surface of the blue star than our orange star. And what did we call this physical law? Yeah, the Stefan-Boltzmann law. Let me go back to stars of the same surface temperature and ask, these two stars are the same size, what would happen to the light curve if I made one star larger? Okay, let's check these predictions by increasing the size of star 1 to 2 solar radii. And note how our eclipse depths are no longer 50%. In both eclipses, what's being covered up is one small star's worth of surface area. And since both stars, in both eclipses, we lose that much area, they have the same eclipse depths. Let me return to stars of equal radii and ask what will happen to the light curve if we make the, the orbits eccentric. Okay, let me check that prediction. And we see that the eclipses are no longer symmetric in time because the stars are moving faster when they're close to the center of mass than when they're farther away, Kepler's second law. Please visit the Nebraska Astronomy Applet Project on the web for this and other high-quality astronomical simulations.